Loud as a whisper. The crew ferries a deaf telepathic mediator to negotiate an end to a civil war. They're going to a planet where two sides are in conflict again. We're only at the beginning of season two and it already feels repetitive. They say they're going just to transport a mediator and that they're not going to interfere. And my first thought was, yeah, right, I'm sure that's how it's going to go. The opening has Picard staring at a hologram of a solar system. One of the planets has an irregular orbit, and Picard is trying to figure out how it maintains that orbit. I thought it was going to tie into stuff later, but it didn't. The whole scene was totally unnecessary, and Picard even says, Well, it's uh, not a matter of any great moment. Just a knot I had to untie. So Riker comes in and looks at the hologram for two seconds. There's no degeneration. Exactly. Why? How can he know that from looking at it for two seconds? He doesn't even know what the context is or anything. So two minutes into the episode, Picard already says that he wants to help. I think we should do everything in our power to assist him. The negotiator they're going to get is called Riva, and it makes Worf uncomfortable, and Troy calls him out in front of everybody. But you're feeling a certain confusion about this mission. No. Yes. Doctor-patient confidentiality What's that? Yeah, especially when she doesn't know what it is that's bothering him. What if he's got diarrhea and he's trying to think about whether he can keep it in? <laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing I thought of, but it is. Can you imagine in real life if a psychologist went around diagnosing people out loud in front of everybody else? Not only would it be uncomfortable, it would be incredibly unprofessional. It turns out Riva negotiated some treaties between the Klingon Empire and the Federation, and that's what's making Worf emotional. So negotiating a treaty like that, you would think they would all know who Reva is, but when they go down to the planet, they seem completely unfamiliar with him. Reva turns out to be deaf, and he has a trio of speakers. He refers to them as his chorus. That represent different parts of his persona and speak for him. They can sense his emotions and relay his innermost thoughts. The actor who plays Reva is deaf in real life, which is cool that they cast him for this character. Reva and his chorus are all pretentious, New agey asshole creeps. <laughs> I hate them all so much. Right from the beginning. You would think somebody who is known for being a mediator would be good at relating to people and communicating, but he comes off as super arrogant. He's supposed to be arrogant, though. It's over the top, and it's dumb. It's definitely over the top. And it's definitely dumb. Reaver starts macking on Troy immediately. It's creepy. It's forceful. There's never more than a few minutes before he starts up again because it gives me a chance to be in your company. Only when the spirit moves me. Counselor Troy could escort me. Being with you here now is provoking an emotional revelation. We could dine together and compare experiences. The crew says they find Riva's method of communication quite harmonious, and Troy says it is elegant. But it seems really annoying, and it was reminiscent of the Binars, and how annoying it was with them, but the crew thought that was really cool too. When Reva meets Jordy and finds out that he's blind, they seem to have an immediate deep connection. They bond over their handicaps, but then I don't think they ever talk again throughout the entire episode. They're briefing Reva on the conflict that he's going to mediate, and Reva says, Thank you, Captain. There is no need to continue. The specific issues of the conflict have no relevance. I understand Reva is supposed to be arrogant, but his over-the-top cockiness pisses me off. Reva manages to score a dinner with Troy. Reva sends his chorus member out of the room, and Troy says, how are we going to communicate? And then reveals that she is the most gifted interpreter of sign language that has ever existed and never experienced sign language before. Is what's important. They finally arrive at the planet, and Riva sets up a meeting between the two factions. There are many times when Riva is not looking at whoever's talking to him, but he responds to them anyway. His relationship to his chorus is never concretely explained in terms of how they communicate with each other. The negotiations are set up, it's very tense, and then one of the guys goes crazy, and he tries to shoot Riva, but he hits the chorus and kills them. When Riva's chorus dies, they all turn into skeletons. Bloody skeletons. It's the dumbest effect. It's really funny, but it's not supposed to be. It reminded me of uh, the first Spider-Man movie, when the Green Goblin throws a bomb at some of the guys on the balcony. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Out, am I? So 
So now Reva can't communicate, and Troy is no help as usual, even though she should be able to help right now. Why doesn't she use her super awesome skills of interpretation that she was using before? Or her empathic powers, or her telepathy. Riker says it was a total surprise, but it wasn't really a total surprise. The two factions have been fighting for 15 centuries. I don't think someone shooting somebody else would be a total surprise. <laughs> Picard says to take Riva to Pulaski. Pulaski says, I've looked at all the ways I could give him hearing. That's Pulaski misinterpreting what Picard wanted. Typical Pulaski. Typical Star Trek. Since Data is Data, he can learn languages really quickly, so they say, why don't you learn sign language? Riva admits his arrogance was to blame for what happened on the planet, but he still acts like everything revolves around him. There's a little side plot. Pulaski's talking to Jordy and telling him she can regenerate his optic nerve and replicate new eyes. And she's done it two times already. Pulaski says there are risks, but what are they? Would he be worse off than he already is if it fails? Will he die? It's a weird little thing because it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the episode. It would have made more sense if, after this, Jordy went to talk to Riva because they already established that connection earlier. Right. What I would have expected is that Riva would have convinced him not to do it, that he should own his disability. Picard says Troy is going to attempt negotiations, and she says, I have never attempted anything like this before. So let's ditch this master negotiator that has done this for decades, has never failed, and replace him with this person that has never done this before, and is going against two factions that have been at war for over a thousand years, and for all intents and purposes just killed the master negotiator. Good idea. They end up not replacing Reva with Troy, but can you imagine how that would have turned out? Not good for them, but pretty funny for us, and maybe Troy would have gotten turned into a bloody skeleton too. Reva's plan is to teach them sign language, and to basically force them all to bond with each other over the experience. You forgot to talk about the smart torches. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty cool. I think this might be the first time that Troy really did something meaningful. Like in her life? <laughs> I guess indirectly she did something potentially meaningful. No, I'm going to give her this one. All right. Loud as a whisper, overall. I really do like the ideas behind Reva and his chorus, but really bland execution, wasted potential all around. We shouldn't hate these characters as soon as they come on screen. I'm going to give it a C minus. I'm going to give it a C. It was potentially a good concept. The crew acted really dumb for a lot of stuff that they shouldn't have been. Jordy's little side plot goes nowhere. Card's hologram side plot goes nowhere, and they even remind us of that at the end, which makes it even worse. They could have made it into some sort of analogy for the main plot, but they don't. It's an interesting idea, but not something that felt substantial enough to expand for an entire episode. 